Hello, y'all. I hope you're doing well. What does it mean to be born again? And is there a difference between being born again and being sanctified? Is there a difference between being born again and spiritual maturity? Is there a difference between being born again discipleship? Yes. Yes, there is. So born again, it is a moment where a person realizes that they are a wretched, blind, dirty stinker before the eyes of a holy God. It is the moment where they realize that and they realize the only way to get back to the Father is to accept Jesus and what he did on behalf of, um, for their sins on the cross. There is a breaking. It is very personal and very different for every single person. Some people have an experience where it's like the heavens open and things were just instantly different. Other people, it's more subtle. Other people, it takes longer to notice, but there's a change and a person has become new. They're a new creature. We have to come to the end of ourselves and realize we cannot save ourselves and that we need to be saved. We even need to realize that we need to be saved before we can come to the end of ourselves and accept Jesus, what he did. He is the only way to the Father. There's no other way. Buddha is not another way. Going through a man or a prophet is not is not the way. Going through, you know, aligning your chakras and doing all this good work is not the way to reach the Father. It's only through Jesus. There is a place to be want to be a good steward of what we've been given. But recognizing that we can never earn, we could never earn our place in heaven. That is, be, is, is when, you, when you come to that realization that you can't earn it, that you are a blind, dirty, wretched stinker before God. There's no other way. Jesus is the only way. Jesus says in John 14, 6, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, I am the truth, the life, and the way. No one comes to the Father but by me. This is what it's talking about when he says, a robber tries to go, try to go through the gate, but tries to climb over the gate. That's what it's talking about. When you try to earn your salvation by your works. Now, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says that we are created unto good works. But who does the work? The Holy Spirit does the work in us as we yield to him. This is discipleship. This is why understanding 1 John 3, 9 is really important. That's talking about the spirit, man. The seed of God is the spirit. And our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions is going through the process of sanctification. So that, you know, obviously I mentioned it before, is 3 John 1, 2. You know, and some people just want to say, this is salvation, this is salvation, and only want to focus on that. And, and it, don't get me wrong, there's like two extremes here, right? And then the people that only want to talk about discipleship. But if we do not understand, if we do not have the right foundation, we can't have discipleship. So I feel like this video is very, very, very important. We get the foundation correct. The foundation is Christ. Christ, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So that is the gospel. Now, what is discipleship? What is sanctification? What is spiritual maturity? Again, it looks different for different people. I'm um, from a lifestyle where they didn't have anybody growing up to support them and love them and show them what the love of the Father is supposed to look like. Some people didn't have that poured into them. You know, everyone's different. I just, I hear stories all the time of people where it, some people it's more instantaneous and then it plateaus for a while. You know, people talk about the mountains and the valleys and their relationship and their walk with God. And it's really important to understand the distinction. This is really important to understand because this isn't Arminianism where we do one thing wrong and Hebrews 6 is like on us, right? This is because God chastens those who are his. If you're not being corrected by the Lord, that may be a sign that you are not his. The problem that we have, and this is why I don't like to call myself an evangelical, I don't personally ascribe to that term, in the evangelical community, is that we wanna focus so much on the gospel that we don't give people discipleship. We're not encouraging people to go deeper in their walk with Christ. We're not talking about, okay, you know, yes, you have received the gospel, now let's grow in spiritual maturity. And so we have people that are like, have been born again for five and 10 years that are at the same place they were when they had their born, born again moment. And I don't even like to use the term saved because that's kind of ambiguous. But I feel like these are really important topics to talk about and important distinctions to be made because on one hand, we don't want to not be encouraging people to go deeper in their walk. 
And on the other hand, we don't want to avoid talking about what the gospel is. Because if we don't have the right foundation, we can't have discipleship. We can't have fellowship with, with God without being born again. We cannot. That's the only way. That's why it's so significant. In John 19, 30, when Jesus cried out, it is finished. Okay? And when it says in Matthew 27, 51, that um, the veil was rent in two. That was the veil that separated the holiest of holies. There's three parts of the temple. Okay, the holiest of holies that the high priest would go in once a year, one temple, and would make sacrifices. Jesus rent the veil in two because he is the only way we can be reconciled to the Father. This is very important to understand. It's very important to get the significance of that because we cannot earn our way to heaven. We can't. And there are people that will say, well, yeah, I believe we can't earn our way to heaven, but we should do X, Y, Z. Let me tell you something. This is the gospel, that we come to the end of ourselves, that we recognize that we are a dirty, rotten stinker before God. The only way to, and we can't earn our way to heaven. We've, we're already toast. We're already headed to hell. We're, we've already got on that train. Jesus, but Jesus, and accepting what he did, surrendering, accepting that I can't save myself, that I need a savior and I cannot save myself. That is the moment when a person is born again. They are born of the water, the physical birth, and born of the spirit, the spiritual birth, as John 3, 5 speaks of. And that we're led by the Holy Spirit of God that is in us. So if the Lord tells you, do X, Y, and Z, and you don't do it, it's sin. Remember, it talks about, I think it's in one of Paul's letters, to him who no, believes it is sin and does it not, it is sin. I believe that's what that's talking about. Because if the Lord tells you to do something and you don't do it, that's sin. Sin is just disobedience to God. Pride is the opposite of obedience to God. Pride is ultimately what every single sin is rooted in. It's pride. It's, well, that's great, God, but I want to go do it my own way. Prodigal son. Oh, you know, I know you have all these cool things for me, but I want to go and spend my inheritance on something that I think is better. And it wasn't that. But sometimes people, when we're praying for people, sometimes people need to go out into the world and experience how bad it is, how bad the party life is, how bad the drug life is, how bad the sleeping around with a million people is, how bad doing X, Y, Z is, or they realize I'm empty. I'm empty and I can't fill myself. And there's something on the inside of me that's telling me Something's not right here. I think it's important to make that distinction. And we do need to teach on both. We do need to teach the gospel. People need to hear the gospel in the pulpit, but they also need to hear about discipleship. And discipleship is not having coffee and talking about wanting to be a better wife and mother. That's self-help. And there's a place for that. There's a place for that. I'm not saying that's all bad. I'm just saying that there's more, you know? How do we pray? Can we, can we teach people how to pray, how to have an intimate prayer life with God? Can we teach people how to, um, you know, a, a class on the historical con context of specific books in the Bible to help give us further understanding of what, what was going on? Huge nerd here. I would, I would love all of that stuff. Anyway, so I hope this has blessed you. Bye.